Let's talk about how to read blueprints. So reading blueprints, right? You're out on a job site, you're that fresh guy that's out, you know, like you're green, or maybe you've been doing this for a few months and you want to like wander over and look at the prints, but then your journeyman's like, get away from the prints. Uh, you want to know what's going on, right? You want to understand what is in all of these pages and how do you, how do you navigate it? And why are there so many pages? So let's go into blueprints. So first off residential, um, the front of the plan is typically going to have an address. It's going to have the entire lot so that you can see any trees. A lot of times these trees are going to be marked out. Um, so it lets you know, like there's a critical root zone that you can't do any construction with, or you're going to destroy that tree, but it's just a general layout of the lot. And then you're going to have general site notes for the entire site. So it's just kind of a high level overview of the job. That's typically how these start out. You'll notice that on the bottoms of the plan, We've got like A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. That means architectural. So most of your residential drawings, it's just gonna be A's. You might have some really big houses that an MEP is involved, a mechanical, electrical, and uh, plumbing engineering firm. So you might have MEP drawings for a residence, but it's typically you're talking like, like I don't know, 8,000 square foot, 10,000 square foot homes and up. Uh, most plans are just gonna have architectural. So uh, the first page is just kind of general overview. Every plan is going to be different too. So if I'm showing you this right now and then you go to your job tomorrow and you're like, this is not at all how he just talked about it. It's because every single architect is going to have a completely way, the different way that they do things. Um, every property has a little bit different reasons to why things might be laid out. So every plan you get is going to be different. Um, typically within the same architectural firm, you'll have that one firm, they kind of do things a certain way. So every time you get a plan by them, it's like, oh yeah, I've seen this plan before because they do the same thing. But most of them are gonna be different. All right, then uh, another page you might come across is the demo plan. So this is the first floor only, first floor demo plan. So it just shows uh, things like a uh, new staircase or it might have things that are um, scratched through, they might be shaded out, they might be dotted lines, they might be like a light color gray instead of everything's dark. Like you can see all of this dashed lines throughout this thing. That means that this is all existing. So this is the existing house. Anything that's not dashed, anything that's a solid line is new. And then this little highlighted area, if you look, it says existing crepe myrtle to be removed, existing 12 inch crepe myrtle to be removed. So you, uh, you can kind of look through all of this. When you get a plan, I recommend that you do it. Doesn't matter that this isn't just an electrical plan or an electrical page, open it up and actually see what's going on because this will tell you, oh, this is the scope of the job. So we're, there's a new cabana going back over here. There's gonna be a new pool where there wasn't a pool before. Um, there's gonna be like a, another room added over here. There's gonna be carpet, 10 foot ceiling. So things like that, you can look in every single one of these, it actually shows what the ceiling height is. So if you're ever in an area and they don't have the ceiling finished yet, and you're just trying to figure out like, where can I run my wires? I don't even know where this, the, the ceiling is gonna be. Um, it, all of that information's on here. Then we've got first floor overall plan. So this is again, just another like overview of the whole thing. Uh, it doesn't show existing and new though. It just shows uh, everything as it's going to be the totality of it. This is what they're calling each one of these areas. We've got a pool, we've got a, they're calling the entry into the pool, the beach. Uh, they have a room that they're calling the Grand Lanai. <laughs> you know, they might have their children's names. Like this one says Megan's wardrobe, uh, wardrobe, Corby's wardrobe. So this is actually, uh, you know, it. The, the architect put each one of the person's names in here. You might not have that. You might have like bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, or you might have bedroom Susie's, bedroom Billy's, bedroom Cliff. I should reflect on those names. Why are those the names I picked? Then we've got a maid's quarters over here, remodeled bath. So it just kind of shows you, so you can start to talk about this with the builder and talk about it with other trades. It lets all of us know that there's common naming to all of this stuff so that we can talk about the rooms as the same rooms instead of being like, oh, that one room that's in the back over there by the pool, the playroom. 
Now the next page is a weird one. It says first floor partial notes plan. So that means that there's probably some notes within here that they couldn't fit more details about those notes, but they still wanted to give details of those notes. So they put another page together that zooms in and focuses specifically on those notes. So it is a partial notes plan that refers to these notes. Can you see how like this can kind of get a little convoluted and you're flipping through all these pages, not knowing what anything is. But if you take the time to flip through every single page, you'll understand like, oh my God, now I know everything that's happening on this job. You know, it's all accounted for. All right, next we've got our elevations. So we have outside elevations to start out. It shows you like uh, what the, the rear elevation, cabana elevation, certain portions of the plan. So they're adding a cabana. So they're giving you a cabana elevation. They put a nice little man there, 36 inch railing per code. Uh, shows where the pool deck is, what's gonna be stucco, what's gonna be a planter for landscaping. Um, but it shows, you know, like even what's going to be a rock wall versus what's a stucco wall, where all the roofs are, if there's new, uh, you know, fireplace, any of that. And it shows you an elevation is just for a side view. Now, the exterior of the building is not the only thing that will have elevations. Elevations can also be interior. Like in this living room, it shows uh, that there's going to be a whole bunch of like bookcases and stuff, maybe a TV going in. Um, but it again is always going to show like one side of a building and if there's multiple layers to a side of a building it'll a lot of times it'll cut through into multiple rooms so you can see that entire side inside and out next we've got the roof plan so this is how the roof structure is going to be laid out if they're going to be adding a new roof that's coming out of an existing roof they have to have a plan for that so everybody knows what's going on it shows the pitch it shows the height um, shows what to demo. There's an existing barrel roof. So it shows to demo all of that. Uh, but that's essentially, you know, shows all of the walls throughout the whole place with the reflected roof as well. Now, as I was saying, we have interior elevations as well. So we started out with the outdoor or, you know, outside of the, of the house, but now we have all of the interior elevations and this could be pages and pages long. But this is where if you're in a kitchen and you're starting to wire a little under cabinet lighting and you got little wires sticking out, but you need to know what the cabinets look like. You need to know where the refrigerator and the dishwasher and all these things are going. So you know where to stub out for all of your under counter lights, or you need to know where the refrigerator is going just so you can put a reception in, um, you're going to need all of the elevations to be able to figure out heights of things. If there's going to be a vanity sconce up above a mirror in a bathroom, a lot of times it'll actually show the mirrors and it'll show like where the light needs to go. If it's center, if there's going to be two of them, what height they want it, all of that stuff. So elevations, you're going to use the crap out of. Um, you can see here, yeah, there's like multiple pages of elevations because Every single room has cabinet details. So the cabinet makers need to know all of that stuff. There's going to have plumbing stuff. There's going to be HVAC. There's going to be uh, stuff for islands and refrigerators and all kinds of just crazy stuff. So electricians definitely, definitely, definitely use um, the elevations, but probably more than we use anything else. Well, that's not necessarily true. I would say we use the main the main lighting or main electrical plan the most, but then we use elevations the, the second most. All right, then the last page on this plan, page 11, is the electrical plan. So in this plan, we don't have any other trades in here. We just have electrical. So we have a little legend over here that shows what all of the symbols mean on this electrical plan. Some plans are going to have little dotted lines that show which things are connected to other things. So when you flip a switch on, it shows which cans are going to be turning on and what the switch locations and all of that are. Other plans are much more basic and, and you have to figure all of that stuff out or you have to consult with the homeowner to figure all of that stuff out. But on the electrical plan, let's look at a couple of things. So we know pretty much any time something has a square with a circle in it and it's spaced out like this in the middle of a room, it's going to be recessed cans. So it tells you, you know, each one's going to have a little bit different symbol. So you might have one that has an arrow on the inside of it. And that arrow on the inside is meant to be an up light. It's not meant to be like a general down light. You might have a directional can and that directional needs to shine on a piece of art or shine, you know, kind of like at an angle at a fireplace or something like that. So uh, some of them might have an A, some of them might have an LVD, some of them might have all kinds of different information. 
uh, written right next to the can and that just lets you know that's a very specific thing. So in this private terrace right here, we've got weatherproof cans. It just says WP next to it. So we know that they're talking about weatherproof cans because this is an outdoor terrace. And then on the inside, they don't have anything written next to them. It's just general uh, recessed cans. It does show how all of them are wired, but in this case, in the breakfast room, it doesn't show a switch location. That could be one or two things. There might be some weird kind of cabinetry or something and they don't know where the switch should be, or this could be on a lighting control system. So there's not actually a switch for it. It might be something that needs to get wired into a lighting control system so that when you touch a touch pad on a wall, that sends a signal to where all of those switch legs are run into an actual lighting control panel. And then from there, they're turned on and turned off. So that's that might be why they don't have anything drawn to an actual switch leg on the plan. Some other lights that we might have. This says chandelier. It's a little circle with four little lines coming out of it. If you look over here, it just says light ceiling mount. So typically a circle with uh, four lines around it is going to be just a, a regular light. This down here in the living room, it actually says chandelier next to it. So they're letting you know it is a ceiling mounted light, but it is a chandelier. So putting a little bit of extra information to like separate it from just like a regular light. They've got all these little cabinets over here that it shows that there's little cans in. So you can see the difference between a large recessed can and a small recessed can. If you go in here and look at the notes, they're calling that a mini recessed can. So it could be a three inch, four inch, um, and then the rest of them in the house could be six inch. Now in this closet right here, you see this weird symbol, and this is for track lighting. So if you look at the plan, it shows track lights, but the number of heads, it shows that they're wanting heads pointing out in multiple directions. A lot of times you'll have them pointing at very specific directions if you're trying to light something specific up. In this case, they're just using it for general lighting and then they've got a chandelier in the middle because there's some kind of an island in the middle of this closet. They got a fancy, <laughs> fancy closet. All right, another thing to look at for lighting are UCLs. So you'll see right here in this prep kitchen, there's a switch, it goes dotted line, and it says to all UCLs under cabinet lighting. So if you got an upper cabinet, we can run little LEDs underneath it. So when you're, you know, you flip lights on, you don't want all the lights in the place going on, but you want some nice little accent lighting, flip a switch on and like, kind of like I have here, just imagine this is a cabinet and it's vertical, but I've, I've got some LED tape put in here. So when I flip a switch, these things turn on. So UCLs, it doesn't actually show, uh, you know, which one has to get wired in what order. There's not a line connecting on any of them, but it does have this little line that looks like an I-beam sort of. So if you look on the plan that says light under cabinet type per specs. So they don't really know what type they're gonna do, they just want us to wire for it. So if you have any of these little like long skinny eye shapes, that lets you know there's gonna be under cabinet lighting pretty much all the way around. You've got some over here, some over here, and they're all separated. Now, another thing uh, you'll see is on the outside of the building, a lot of sconces are drawn a little bit differently. It's just a line with a circle attached to it. So if we look over in the plan, what does, circle with just line, it says light wall mount. So that's what sconce is, it's a wall mounted light. So you'll have these also a lot of times like outside around the place, you might have them um, in bathrooms. There's one right here, shows actually there's two of them. There's one over the sink and then there's one over the, um, the little countertop on the side. So that's just another kind of lighting. So that's pretty much it for lighting. You might see ceiling fans, all kinds of extra stuff that I'm not talking about. There's tons of different things that can be added to a plan, but that's generally how you're gonna look at all your lighting. We're fortunate in this one to have, you know, each one of these is drawn together so that we know which ones need to be switched together. But sometimes you won't have that and you'll have to sit and ask the customer or ask the builder like, hey, how do you, how do you want all these switched? Is this all on one thing? Cause that kind of seems like a different area than this, but that all the cans are in the same kind of area. So like, you know, you'll have, sometimes you just have to figure information out and you gotta ask good questions. So uh, beyond the lighting, let's look at the power for a second. So we've got all of these little receptacles. If you have a circle with two lines through it, that means that it is a 120 volt uh, duplex receptacle. Um, we can look at the plan just to verify. All of these say outlet, 110 volt duplex. When I say 120, 115, 110, it's all the same thing. It's just different eras of humans 
and things change, but it's all talking about the same range of power. So circle with two lines is gonna be a regular outlet. If you have a circle with three lines, that's typically a 220 volt outlet. Three lines uh, typically means that you've got two hots and a neutral, whereas two lines means you have a hot and a neutral. You could also have this little hashtag with a circle around it, and that means it's a quad outlet. So it just means that there are two duplex outlets right next to each other in a, in a two gang box. So that's how you know it's a quad. A lot of times you'll have receptacles that don't have anything drawn. Like this entire plan, there's no lines connecting any of the receptacles because it's kind of up to us to figure out what needs to be on dedicated circuits. Like um, if you're in a, a kitchen, you might have the vent hood or a range that has its own circuit. You might have specific appliances, disposal, dishwasher, kitchen, or uh, refrigerator. I think there's actually two refrigerators in here. Um, and these refrigerators in these big houses can be like monster refrigerators. So a lot of times we'll just run uh, dedicated circuits to every single appliance, but you have to figure that out. Now, if you notice too, I've got all of these lines with little arrows drawn. That's me writing down on the plan so that everybody knows what the home run is. Home run is the run of wire that comes from wherever the electrical panel is to this place. And then once it branches out, that's the rest of the circuit. But the one wire that hits this room from the panel that goes home to the panel is called our home run. So when we wire a place, typically we're gonna wire all of these rooms individually. We're gonna get all of the like jumpers between each thing run. And then we're gonna move to the next room and we're gonna get the jumpers between the things run and we're gonna move to the next. And we just keep doing that over and over. And then we have a home run party. <laughs> and at one day we come in, we bring tons of wire and we just wire home runs because you're burning through like multiple rolls. You might burn through 15, 20 rolls in a day of just running these long 100 foot, 200 foot runs. And a lot of times you'll, you'll run like four of them if there's like four home runs in an area, like one, two, three, four, five. We might run all five of those together. That'd be a little bit crazy. You're probably gonna get some things tangled up and run some ugly wire, but it's not uncommon for me to run four and I'll just have four reels hanging from a ceiling somewhere and I pull all four of those wires together. Anyways, so then what I do on the plan when I am running all my home runs is I take a black marker and after I've run these four, I just go boom, 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 boom. That lets everybody on the job site know, oh, Dustin already ran those four. So the ones that are not marked with Sharpie are the ones that still have to be run. So that's just the way that we do it. But there's probably a million other ways. Leave some comments below. <laughs> You've got better ways. Um, okay, so that's the receptacles. You'll see little letters next to some receptacles. Countertop is CT, which means it is a countertop receptacle. It's there to serve the countertop. You might have APP next to one of them, and that's just gonna tell you that it's an appliance receptacle. So it's specifically an appliance circuit. That is one way that architects will tell you that they want it to be dedicated. You might just have a D next to a receptacle. That could mean just dedicated. Again, look at the key for all of that. Same thing with switches. A lot of switches will say a D next to them. That means they want a dimmer put on that switch. They could say uh, S3, and that could be a, a three-way switch, S4, four-way switch. So there's a lot of times there's little like letters next to things, and you might just have to go into here and see, you know, into the into the legend to actually see what all of that stuff is. All right, so that is pretty much it for residential plans. The next video I do is going to be on commercial plans, so make sure that you check that video out. Let me know if you got any comments, suggestions, questions. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.